In this tutorial, we will look how to combine paired reads to contigs. So if you have, for example, MySeq data, it's typically paired end, and we need to merge those pairs to contig sequences. So after watching this video, you will be able to describe how the paired reads are merged by vSearch package in Chipster, and what things need to be taken into account, how to set and modify the parameters, and what are the resulting output files. And I will also tell a bit about posterior quality score calculations. So in Chipster we will use nowadays the vSearch package and the tool named FastQ Merge Spurs for this step. And vSearch is an open source and free of charge package, which is an alternative to the uSearch. And for more information on the vSearch package, you can check this article typed here. And as an input, you need to give a tar package of FastQ files. And how to make the tar package in Zipster was already explained in the quality control video. But yeah, so what does the FastQ merge pairs actually do? So at first, it creates the reverse complement of the reverse read. So after that, the reverse read is oriented on the same strand as the forward read, and the bases of the reverse read are interchanged like A and T and C and G, like you can see in that picture here. And so it extracts the sequences and the quality data from the FastQ files and aligns the forward and the reverse reads. And FastQ merge pairs command discards any overhangs at the end of the reads which do not align to the other read. And the speciality is that vSearch calculates also the posterior quality scores, so the quality scores for the merged reads. But what are posterior quality scores? So every base in the forward and in the reverse read has a certain quality score, which tells how likely it is that the base call is right or wrong. And how to understand the red quality scores was already explained quite deeply in the quality control video. So, if the base goals match, then the quality score should increase. And if there is a mismatch, like here, then the quality score should reduce. But not always, because if the quality score is low enough, like 2, the base call is predicted to be wrong. And, but like you see here in this picture, the posterior quality score are not just the sum or reduction of the quality scores from the forward and the reverse reads. So actually it uses the bias theorem to calculate posterior quality scores. And for more information on the equations how to calculate posterior qual quality scores in every situation, you should check this article here. But you can also see the equations here in this slide where the Vx and Py are the error probabilities in the forward and in the reverse reads. And calculating correct posterior quality scores is a huge advantage because it enables, for, for example, a better estimate or number of errors in the read and it enables to filter the contigs based on ex expected error and I will talk about that in the next video. So here you can see the combined paired reads to context with vSearch parameters tab in Zipster on the left side. So for the FastQ merge pair command, you can change some parameter values which will affect the results. At first, you can set the maximum number of non-matching nucleotides allowed in the overlap region. And by default, it's set to 10, like you can see here, which means that 10 mismatches are allowed in the overlap region. And then the other option is to set the maximum percentage of non-matching nucleotides in the overlap region. And by default, it's set to 100%, which means that all the nucleotides can be non-matching, but it will still merge the reads. And to see some results, you should set it to 5% or lower normally. 
and you can make those both parameters stricter or less based on your data and especially depending on the length of your overlap region. And if you use both of those parameters, then that one which is stricter will be used. So in other words, the mer merge sequences should pass those both arguments or parameters. And at third, you can also discard input sequences which have ambiguous bases or bases called n. And as an output, like you see in the right side, you will get four files. The context.tar is a tar package which contains all the merged FASTQ files. So it has one FASTQ file for one sample. Then the sample FASTQ is a text file which allows you to check if the FASTQ files were assigned to the samples correctly. So like you can see here in this text file, you can that the first column are the names of the samples. And those names are split by, from the long names with, uh, by this underscore mark here. And then in this column are the forward FASTQ files, and then at last here are the reverse FASTQ files. You should always check that the assignment to the context went correctly. So if you see or notice any problems here in this text file, you can also give this kind of a text file as an input for th this tool. So those two summary files are used to make it easier to investigate how many reads were merged and how many not. And on the TSV table on the left side, one row is for one sample. And you can easily see how many reads failed to merge and how many percentage was that. And then if you notice something weird in this TSV table, you can use the summary text file to investigate why the reads were not merged. Like you can see here, in this place, you can see the reasons why the reads were not merged or discarded.